I am lucky enough to call myself an independent filmmaker. I've directed nine independent narrative feature films, and I've been involved as a writer and an editor and as a producer and sometimes a consultant on lots of other projects. And I'm here today to talk about the realities of making money in independent film. First, let's define what is an independent film. Simply put, it's a film that is financed and produced outside of the Hollywood system. Now, as such, it's usually made without any distribution set up ahead of time. And as an investment, it's extremely risky. Now, I might be shooting myself in the foot here, but listen to this. Each year, $3 billion is spent on independent films. $3 billion. And for that $3 billion, about 5,000 independent films are made. Interestingly, Hollywood spends about the same amount of money, about $3 billion each year. And for their $3 billion, they make about 100 movies. So you can see the kind of money that Hollywood is pumping into their blockbuster releases. And you can also see what us little independent filmmakers are up against. OK, so there are 5,000 movies made independently every year. Each year at the Sundance Film Festival, 4,000 of those 5,000 movies are submitted because Sundance is the pinnacle. All of us filmmakers want our movies at Sundance because we hope it can be launched there. OK, so 4,000 of those 5,000 are submitted. 121 films are accepted and screened at the Sundance Film Festival every year. And of those 121 films, only 40 sell. 40 out of 4,000 movies sell independently each year. And that is only 1%. 1%. Now, as a business model, it just doesn't make sense. It's crazy. Who in the world would ever want to get into a business where only 1% of the viable product any year sells and makes money? It just plain does not make sense. But the answer is passion. My fellow independent filmmakers are the most passionate people I have ever met. They all share the same dream I have to get out there and make a movie and put it up on the big screen for the whole world to see. And frankly, it's not about making money. It's kind of the last thing in our minds. We have this driving, passionate desire to tell stories. But don't let any independent filmmaker tell you that they wouldn't love to catch lightning in a bottle. Films like The Blair Witch Project, My Big Fat Greek Wedding, Juno, Paranormal Activity, these are lightning in a bottle. They are exactly that. They're the one in a million film that actually breaks out and makes huge profits around the world for their investors and for the filmmakers. These films are home runs. No, they're, they're grand slams in the scheme of things. But I'm not here to talk about grand slams today. I'm here to talk about singles up the middle. I'm a singles up the middle kind of guy. I've been in the business a, a long time, and I've made a lot of movies that you've probably never heard of. But I can tell you right now, my batting average is a hell of a lot better than 1%. OK? And I looked at the business, and I said, now, wait a second. I've been doing this for a while. How am I going to make money at this? <laughs> well, it's, a, it's a very good concept. So how do you make money making independent films? And I said, all right, why do so many films fail? And, I, and frankly, why did the first couple of movies I make made, why did they perform less than I'd hoped they would? And the answer I came up with was twofold. First of all, the movies just plain weren't good enough. And second, we spent too much money. OK. Audiences these days are really sophisticated. And they are inundated with media wherever they turn. There's so much out there bombarding people and vying for their time and their attention and their money. So if you're going to make a piece of media, if you're going to make a movie, it better be good. No, 
It better be really good. Now, I've been a film festival judge, not at Sundance, but at a local film festival here in Massachusetts, and I have seen some really bad movies. <laughs> really bad. But obviously, there's a huge difference, a huge gray area between these really bad movies and a really good movie. And we're dealing with art here, so judging what's good and bad is obviously very subjective. But as filmmakers, we have to look as objectively as possible at the movie we want to make and decide, is it going to be good enough to compete in a global marketplace? All right, the next question is, how much money do we spend? The answer is very simple. As little as possible to tell your story, but still make a professional piece of cinema. Digital filmmaking has changed our world. It's revolutionized what we do. The cost of digital cameras, what you see around the room today. It's, it's brought the barrier to entry down enormously so that making professional films is something that almost anybody can do. There's desktop, there's desktop editing systems that you can work on your laptop and make a professional looking movie. But clearly, having the right tools is not enough. If we're a savvy filmmaker, we have to look out into the, into the marketplace and realize that the buyers know about this technological revolution, and they are demanding the same quality product now at a lower price point, which is a bummer. But it's just the facts of the business. So as filmmakers, we have to ask ourselves a critical business question, because after all, this is a business. What is the cost threshold at which we can produce a really good movie without sacrificing the critical elements needed and necessary for worldwide sales and turn a profit? OK, so what are those critical elements? It's excellent production value, excellent storytelling, and excellent acting. Acting and actors are the name of the game. Bad acting? can ruin a really good piece of film. On the flip side of that, good acting will let an audience sort of forgive less than professional filmmaking. Actors are the name of the game, and not just any actors, good actors, and even better, name actors. Actors with internationally known reputations, because they're the, the, the key to selling your movie. We should do everything we possibly can to get the best caliber actors with the best name recognition that we possibly can to give ourselves the best chance of selling our movie because stars sell, period. OK. All that being said, how do we go about hitting a single up the middle? Now, the first thing to realize is that spending some time in the farm leagues is really not, not something to be ashamed of. It's actually something you probably should do. Learn the trades. Learn what it takes to make a movie. Spend time on other directors' sets and watch them make mistakes and learn from those mistakes. That's a really important thing you can be doing. OK, so if you spend some time in the farm leagues, oh, and actually, another piece of advice, I, I, I hear a lot of, of, of kids come up to me and they say, hey, I want to be a filmmaker. I, what, what film school should I go to? Where did you go to film school? Well, I didn't go to film school, and I don't mean to down talk film schools. There's some wonderful programs, and you can learn a lot of really, really great stuff at film school. But a better piece of advice might be get a really good liberal arts degree. Learn about literature. Learn about what's going on in the world. What makes a good story? Why does Shakespeare still resonate today? What about these mythological tales? Why do they still have relevance in what we are doing? Learn what's going on in the world so that you can tell a story that's relevant now. OK. So you want to get in the game. First thing you got to do is get out of the dugout. Step out onto the field. Find yourself that great idea that's going to be sellable to an international audience. That's the ticket. OK. You've got your great idea. Move up to home plate, all right? Step up to home plate. But think about now your, your, your intellectual property that you've developed. You have 
an idea, a screenplay, an, a movie that you're going to make? Do you own your intellectual property? And more importantly, do you control the financing? Because if you can control the intellectual, intellectual property and the financing, you'll have a much better chance of making money. Because like in any business, the people who sell are the first people to make money. And we love our distributors, we love our studios, our sales agents, because they're the ones that get our movies out into the world and we need them. But if we control our intellectual property and we control the financing, we have a much better chance of participating on the back end. Okay. Step in the batter's box. Dig in. Squash the bug. That's what my coach used to tell me. Now, think about your screenplay. Is it ready? Is it as good as it possibly can be? This is a point at which a lot of independent movies fall down. They go into production before their screenplay is ready, and it's a rookie move. Study screenwriting. Read up on it. Study story. Is your hero somebody that the audience is going to be rooting for to the very last frame of the movie? Is your theme something that's, that's universal, that's mythological, that's primal? And get a lot of people to read your screenplay who know what it means to make a good movie and how a screenplay works. Not just your friends and family who are going to say, yeah, 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 it's great. But you want really critical feedback on your screenplay before you get ready to go. OK. Choke up on your bat. I told you, we're not hitting for home runs here. We are just trying to put that ball in play. And that means think about the scope of your movie. How big is it? How can you compress the scope of your movie? How many characters do you really need? How many locations are necessary? You know, how many days is it going to take to shoot your movie? Because the fewer days it takes to shoot your movie, the less it's going to cost. The less it costs, the easier it's going to be to make money back for your investors. All right, now wait for your pitch. Don't listen to that obnoxious fan in the, in the stands who's yelling, hey, bada, 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 swing. He's a distraction. Ignore him. You're going to have a lot of distractions as you get into the, into the batter's box. They're going to tell you to do one thing. They're going to give you their ideas. They're going to push you to go before you're ready. But don't. Wait for your pitch. OK. Here it comes. It's a fastball. Right out over the middle. A meatball. Now, you've choked up on your bat. I want you to take a compact, smooth, easy swing and poke a line drive right out over the pitcher's head out into center field. Big theatrical release with a multi-million dollar ad campaign that everyone in America sees and knows about is great. But that's not the only way to market. A nice little cable premiere, followed by video on demand and subscription video on demand. DVDs, even though they're not what they used to be, are still a big part of it. And foreign sales will be happier revenue. All these little pieces of the pie are what, are what is going to make your movie be in the black. Now, the beauty of this is, is if you make even just a, a small, modest profit on your film, you're going to have an opportunity to do it again. If you flop and your investors lose all your money, you're not going to get a second chance. There are lots and lots, thousands and thousands of first-time filmmakers out there, but there's really only a handful of second and third-time directors, and there's a reason for that. Now. Every once in a while, an idea will come along that is a home run. It's an idea you just can't pass up. It's something that you just you know it's going to break out. Now, if you've done your preparation, if you've, you've gone to the farm leagues, you've hit your singles up the middle, you've done your homework, and you're ready to go, by all means, swing at this curveball that's hanging out over the middle of the plate with all your might. Smash it over the green monster. I hope it stays fair, and good luck to you. But if you want to work consistently, you want to make money for your investors, and you want to stay sane in this crazy, crazy business, hit singles up the middle. Thank you.